I blink and find myself in the darkness, flashlight clutched in my trembling hand. The beam flickers, casting fleeting shadows on the slick, glistening walls. I don't remember how I got here. One moment I was sitting in my living room, sipping coffee and flipping through channels, and the next, I'm standing in this tunnel, dark, scary, alone. The air is damp, and the walls seem to pulsate as if they're alive. How the hell did I get here? And where the hell is here? I take a deep breath, the air thick and moist, and begin to walk, my bare feet slapping against the soft, wet floor. I feel the tiny drops of moisture splashing up the backs of my legs as I realize I'm still wearing the same shorts I had on in my own home. My footsteps echo ominously, each step sounding as if it reverberates for miles. I shine my flashlight down the tunnel, but it seems to stretch endlessly into the void. I quicken my pace, a sense of urgency rising within me. I have to find an exit. I have to get out of here, wherever I am. As I walk, the walls begin to breathe, expanding and contracting rhythmically. The flickering beam of my flashlight playing tricks on me. I reach out and touch the wall, recoiling at its wet, soft texture. It feels almost like flesh, warm and yielding under my fingers. I jerk my head back, heart pounding. My mind must be playing tricks on me. I shake my head, trying to clear the fog of fear and confusion. Where the hell am I? I asked out loud. But the tunnel nor my mind gives any response. Suddenly I hear a whisper, faint but distinct. I freeze, straining to listen. It's a voice, soft and sibilant, but I can't make out the words. My flashlight flickers again, like a slow, pulsing strobe light, and I feel a cold shiver run down my spine. The whispering grows louder, more insistent. It's coming from behind me. I turn around, shining my light back the way I came, but there's nothing there. Just the empty tunnel, stretching out into the darkness. Hello? I ask in a tone I recognize as one of paranoia. There's no answer. I start to run, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The walls seem to close in around me, the tunnel narrowing, squeezing, pressing me from both sides. The whispers turn into a cacophony of voices overlapping, echoing off the walls. They're laughing at me, mocking my fear. I stumble, almost falling, but I catch myself and keep running. I have to get out. I have to escape. My flashlight beam wavers, the light dimming. I slap it against my hand, trying to coax more power out of it. For a moment, the light brightens, and I see something up ahead. A figure, standing motionless in the middle of the tunnel. My heart leaps into my throat. I stop, panting, and shine the flashlight at the figure. It's a man, his face obscured by shadow. Who are you? I shout, my voice echoing eerily. The figure doesn't move. I take a step forward, then another. The man remains still, silent. I feel a surge of anger on top of the fear. What do you want? The figure dissolves into mist, vanishing before my eyes. I blink, unable to believe what I just saw. My mind is unraveling, the fear twisting my perception. I turn and run again, the voices growing louder, the tunnel seeming to pulse and writhe around me. I don't know how long I've been running. Minutes? Hours? Time has lost all meaning. My legs ache, my breath comes in ragged gasps, but I can't stop. I won't stop. The tunnel narrows further, forcing me to crouch as I move forward. The walls are closing in squeezing the air out of my lungs, forcing me to move sideways through its confined space. Suddenly the ground beneath me shifts and I fall, sliding down a steep incline. I tumble, the flashlight slipping from my grasp and clattering away. I hit the bottom with a thud, pain radiating through my body, the moist ground seeping into my clothes. I lie there for a moment, dazed, the world spinning around me. I force myself to sit up, Groping in the darkness for my flashlight, I find it, the light barely a glimmer now. I click it on and off, hoping for a miracle. 
The light flickers, then stabilizes, dim but steady. I shine it around, trying to get my bearings. The walls are closer now, pressing in on me. They seem to pulse with a life of their own, slick and wet, like the inside of some monstrous creature. The whispers have become a roar, deafening, filling my head with their maddening, irregular symphony. I cover my ears, but it doesn't help. I can feel the voices inside my mind. Help me, I whisper, tears streaming down my face. Someone please help me. A cold breeze brushes past me and I look up. There, at the end of the tunnel, a light is born. It's faint, but it's there. Hope surges within me and I scramble to my feet, stumbling toward the light. The tunnel seems to resist, the walls constricting, but I push forward, driven by desperation. Squeezing through as fast as I can as the walls push against my chest and my back. As I approach the light, the voices reach a fever pitch, screaming in my ears, ringing in my head. I break into a run, or the best I can manage. My eyes fixed on the light. I'm almost there. Just a few more steps. The light grows brighter, blindingly bright. I burst out of the tunnel and collapse on the ground, gasping for air. The voices fall silent, and I'm left with only the sound of my own ragged breathing. I look around, blinking in the harsh light. I'm in a large room, an office, but it's empty. Fluorescent lights bathe the empty room in a yellowish-white glow. I look around and see one flickering at the other end of the rectangle room. I gather my strength and pull myself to my aching bare feet. I rise up, trembling, my clothes damp and clinging to me. The air stuffy, with a small buzz of the fluorescent lighting filling the void, but everything else is dead silent. The white walls seem to capture my deep breathing as if to inhale my own exhalations. Thick pillars prop the room on stilts and the white walls feel more like a prison. I gather what energy I have left and begin walking toward the strobing ceiling fixture as if it's telling me this is the way. The faster I walk, the farther the light seems to be, as if the room itself is elongating, growing. More panic and fear begin to set in. Haven't I had enough of this nightmare? What have I done to deserve this? I'm a good man. I wish I could just wake up. I try pinching myself to no avail. I beat my fists against the wall. It's hard like concrete, but it doesn't cause me pain. It actually flexes under the beating. I press my forehead to it. The wall is cool to the touch, cooler than the stuffy room. It doesn't make sense. I put my back to the wall and slide down until I'm sitting against the cold wall, which seems to get colder the longer I lean on it. Tears stream my eyes and cheeks. I hear a buzz and a click just as I see the lights from the direction I came begin to go out one by one, getting closer to me. I stomp to my feet and wipe my face of the tears. Moping isn't going to get me out of here wherever the hell here is. I begin walking toward the blinking light again and surprisingly it draws closer, slowly, slower than the pace in which I'm walking, but still closer. Behind me from the shadows I hear a shuffling, almost a dragging sound. I look back but the pitch black that was once adorned in the light reveals no secrets. The sound urges closer and I pick up speed, limping. I begin to run, or at least try to run. I must have hurt my leg in the fall to this strange room. My knee begins to throb as my foot begins dragging, unable to carry my weight fully. The dragging sound is almost on top of me, and the darkness is just ahead of it. I reach the blinking light just as everything goes black. I feel the floor become like a ghost or mist beneath me and feel myself fall. With a hard thud, I hit the ground. Another bright light covers my body, my eyes blurry. I try to make out the shapes in this room. It seems familiar. I prop myself onto my hands and knees, and I feel the carpet below me. My eyes clear slightly. I'm back on my living room floor. The TV's still on. The same classic show I had on. 
I must have blacked out and fell or something. I try to raise myself, but the pain in my knee prevents any kind of extended movement. Did I hurt my knee when I collapsed? Is that what caused this horrific nightmare? I roll over to my bottom and prop myself on the couch, every muscle aching, and I turn off the TV. The air's strange. That smell. I know it. The same putrid stench from the tunnel. My eyes fully clear. I look down and see my clothes are soaking wet and filthy. The smell is coming from me. I need to get out of here. Need to be around people. Need to feel the warmth of the sun on my skin. Something. Anything to tell me I'm not still dreaming. I walk to the door, glancing back one last time at the empty living room. I open the door, and the usual signs of life are missing. No children playing in the streets, no cars driving by, and no dogs barking at pedestrians as they take a casual stroll around the neighborhood. What time is it? I look at my watch and it reveals it's 2 a.m. How could this be? Sun is high in the afternoon sky, yet all other signs point to it being much later. Street lights are even on, and I can see constellations high in the sky even though it's bright. A chill runs throughout my body. As I step outside, I hear a whisper behind me. I freeze, my heart pounding. Slowly, I turn around, but there's nothing there. Just the empty living room, bathed in the ominous sunlight. I look outside again and the sun is gone, leaving the neighborhood in an unrivaled darkness. The streets have a hazy glow around them and the constellations dull in a fog. The moon blinks inconsistently. My body aches. Where am I? I step back into my home and close the door gently, unwilling to awake whatever demon has been putting me through this hell. If this was a dream, the memories should fade. But I can't escape the memories of that horrifying experience. I must be hallucinating. That has to be it. It's the only thing that makes sense. Slowly, I creep back into my living room, still not convinced that someone or something isn't here with me. The room's empty just as I left it. The TV is off. The cup of coffee still on the table from the last time I was in this room. But the air is different, charged with a malevolent energy feel a chill run down my spine. I hear the whispering again, louder now, coming from the center of the room. I step forward, my hands shaking as I reach for the coffee cup. As my fingers brush the cool ceramic, the room shifts. The walls twist and warp, and the soft carpeted floor falls away beneath me. I'm back in the tunnel, the flashlight once again in my hand. I scream, the sound echoing off the walls. The air is thick, the darkness pressing in on me. I shine the flashlight ahead, but the beam seems to be swallowed by the void. The walls pulse, breathing, the whispers growing louder, more insistent. I run, my splashing footsteps echoing. The walls close again. I feel the moist, soft ground once again, absorbing the impact of my feet. I can feel the tunnel constricting, squeezing, the wet walls brushing against my shoulders. My breath becomes labored, my heart pounding in my chest. I see the figure again, standing in the middle of the tunnel. The same as it all had been before. This time I don't stop. I charge forward, disregarding the pain in my knee, determined to confront this apparition with every bit of adrenaline I have. This time, as I get closer, I see its face. It's me. My own face twisted in a grotesque smile. The figure reaches out, its hand cold and clammy. I scream and swing the flashlight, but it passes through the figure as if it's made of smoke. The figure mocks me with the same motion and smiles. The apparition dissolves, and I stumble forward, falling to my knees, feeling the pain from my first injury shoot through my leg, making my stomach ache. The whispers are deafening now, the tunnel closing in around me, I can barely breathe, the air thick and wet. I feel the ground shift again and I slide down another incline, tumbling into the darkness helplessly. I hit the bottom hard, the flashlight flying from my grasp, although I gripped it tightly. I lie there, grasping for air again, my body aching, 
Again, I reach for the flashlight, but it's just out of reach. The tunnel is darker than ever. The whisper is a constant roar in my ears and in my head. I force myself to stand, stumbling forward. The walls are so close now, pressing in on me. I can feel them moving, breathing, the wetness soaking into my clothes and dampening my skin. I'm trapped, suffocating. My heart pounds in my chest, the fear overwhelming. Help me, I whisper, my voice barely audible over the orchestra of whispers. Please, someone help me. I don't know how long I've been wandering in the darkness. The aches and soreness in my body tell me it's been hours. My legs feel like lead, my knee only holding up from fear. Each step an agonizing effort. The walls are pressing in tighter, the tunnel narrowing to the point where I have to crawl. The flashlight is almost dead, the light flickering weakly. The whispers change, becoming clearer. They're calling my name now, in voices I almost recognize. Family, friends, people I had known in my life. They're here with me, somewhere in the darkness, or maybe I'm losing my mind. It's impossible to tell. Suddenly, I see a light ahead. My heart thuds in my chest. I scramble toward it, the tunnel growing tighter with each inch I move, giving me hope, but trying to keep that hope out of reach until the tunnel fully consumes me. I'm crawling on my hands and knees now, the wall slick and yielding, spongy. The light grows brighter, and I reach out, desperate to touch it. My hand breaks through, then my head. I burst out of the tunnel and collapse onto the ground once again. The voices fall silent, and I'm left with the sound of my own labored breathing. I open my eyes, hoping to see my living room again, my real living room. But it's the empty office. This has now become a terrifying routine. I know that if I go toward that blinking light, the lights behind me will begin to extinguish. I can't keep repeating this process. So I turn the other direction and try to place one foot in front of the other to begin moving away from the repetition. My knee is pounding, throbbing. Somehow I manage to regain some use of it. I slowly hobble toward the other direction of the endless room. A ceiling light begins to flicker in the distance as the room shifts, contorts. The lights begin growing dark behind me. The dragging sound revives itself in the darkness, catching up to me. I'm drained. All adrenaline has left my body, leaving me with fear and resignation. My mind is a hurricane of confusion. How did I get to this awful place? What have I done to deserve this? I lean against the wall and grab my now useless knee. The endorphins limiting my pain are exhausted, and the full brunt of my suffering crashes into me. I collapse, sliding down the wall, clasping my swollen knee. Just one more light remains lit behind me before I'm plunged into total darkness. But it stops. The light remains on, as if it knows I can't continue on. Is this some kind of twisted game? I feel the air thicken becoming hotter, to the point sweat is pouring from my body. Whatever this is, it wants me to move. It wants me to run. It wants to give chase. What use is catching prey when the prey resigns itself to its own doom? My mind shifts to my lonely life. I realize no one will miss me. My family has been gone for a long time. No kids to mourn me. No wife to worry for me. I'm truly alone. So, I give in. I yell to the darkness. Take me! The last light flickers, then goes dark. If you've enjoyed this story of isolation and loneliness, check out my other short stories of the paranormal and strange tales. If you enjoy them, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Growing this channel helps me create more content on a regular basis. Until the next time, stay weird.